Hello, fellow library lover, and welcome to another webinar in which we'll discuss an online database in detail. Today's database we'll be discussing is the Auto Repair Source by EBSCO. Hi, my name is Stuart Schaefer, and I'm the head of reference at the Farmingdale Public Library. If you need to contact me, my contact information is um, my phone number is 516 249 9090 and my extension is 203. My email address is fdaleref at nasolibrary.org. So without that, with that out of the way, I'd like to sort of talk about our database in, in detail. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about the auto repair source, which is an EBSCO product. You have access to this resource from the library remotely using your library card, so you'll need that. Um, to get access to it. On the back of your library card is a 14 digit number. You're going to need to input that at some point today um, when to access it. So this is more of a specialized database or resource. It's pretty much for the car lover in your life who wants to fix or maintain or repair um, your car. Um, as they talk about um, the, the database, um, it's basically auto repair information from domestic and imported cars that were manufactured from 1954 all the way to the present. So, as you can see, there's a huge amount of information available, and we're going to discuss most of it, or a lot of it. I'm going to show you how to gain access to it, and uh, how you can print and email, and how you can make screens bigger and smaller and search for different um, resources in the database. The um, interface is user-friendly, meaning it's crisp, clean, and uh, easy to read. It takes a little practice to actually um, to get a feel for the resource, but once you do that, you'll have no problem accessing it. So on your screen now is my contact information, and you'll be able to see it because I'm gonna highlight it. And I'm going to scroll down. I talk about the specialized nature of the database, and one thing that I do want to point out is that auto repair source can actually save you some money with its labor and parts calculator. I'm going to talk about that um, a little later in the presentation, but um, basically you can get an idea of how much a repair job should cost in terms of how, much, how many hours of labor it'll take the mechanic and um, how much the parts should theoretically cost. Um, we're going to search for a particular car, its make and model, and I'm going to show you um, how to actually figure out um, where you can find technical service bulletins, diagnostic trouble codes, and a maintenance schedule, and uh, something that we've gotten a lot of questions of questions about in the past at the library, wiring diagrams. Um, you can actually print them and take them out to the car and start your maintenance uh, with those uh, documents or the diagrams in your hand. So um, let me just share my screen a little. I want to change it from uh, a new share and we're going to go to the library's website. And uh, the library's website can be found at farmingdalelibrary.org and at the top part of the page is a green bar. We're going to click on the research button. Then we're going to go to electronic resources by subject. And we're going to click on auto repair. Might take a second to get to it. There we go. We only have one auto repair uh, database in our, in our inventory. But um, basically, it's right here. And it says, it's auto repair information from domestic and imported cars manufactured from 1954 to the present, which is pretty much what I just mentioned before. Um, this has also been known as um, auto repair reference center in the past and some other names, but uh, EBSCO renamed it recently. We're gonna click on the link over here and I'm gonna sign in with my barcode. You'll have to do this from home as well. And uh, this is the interface. It's very simple, very few, uh, very few tabs, very few buttons that you have to click on. And um, we're going to go from there. 
So I selected a 2009 Nissan Altima. We're gonna use this drop down menu. We're gonna to go to 2009. We're gonna click on select under make and it's a Nissan. You can see that it's a wide variety of uh, makes. We have Acuras and BMWs and Buicks and Dodge and Ford and GMC and Honda and Jeeps and Kias and Lotuses and Maseratis and Mazdas and Pontiacs and Nissan and Toyotas and Volkswagens and Volvos. But we're gonna to go to Nissan and now we're gonna click on the model, look at all these different models they cover. Everything from Muranos to Pathfinders to Quest, Sentras, Titans, Versus, Xterras. And uh, we are going to search for the Nissan Altima, just the simple one over here. In some cases, you'll be able to select the engine type. Some uh, make and model um, for a particular year, they have more than one engine type. In this case, we're just gonna use this 2.51 over here. And on the left, it actually populated the screen for us. We have subjects or subject headings in airbags, air conditioning and anti-theft and keyless entry, and battery replacement, body and frame brakes, component locations, cooling system, um, the electrical system, the electronic stability controls, engine management, engine service, exhaust, fluids. There's the maintenance schedule, just a general maintenance subject over here. Parts and labor, I will try to remember. I will do more than remember. I will talk about parts and labor a little later. Specification, steering suspension, technical service bulletins put out by, I think, the ATSM or the TSB, travel. We'll get to that in a second tires, torque specifications, transmission, wheel alignment, and wiring diagrams. We're gonna talk about as well, that as well. So what I wanted to show you was under brakes, since that's pretty much essential to any car. So I clicked under brakes and a whole bunch of other options appeared. Everything that I'm scrolling in that is white. Under brakes, I wanted to go to the uh, anti-lock brake service, I believe. And the ABS anti-lock brake system, I think. We wanted to look at that. anti-lock brakes. So I want to show you the, over here, the anti-lock. This is a description of the anti-lock brake system. I'm highlighting it. And they have some uh, schematics down here. Figure one, I'm gonna click on that. Now, if you wanted to see this diagram in bigger, you can actually click the plus up here. We start out at pretty much, I believe, 20%. And each time you uh, click the plus, it takes you up a bit to 50%. And if you wanted to, you could use the drop down menu to make it 100%. That's going to make it huge. But you can click on print as shown if you wanted to print it, or you could print to fit the page. That means it's actually going to print and it's going to be roughly the size of the page, so it will fit on the page. If you click print as shown, some of the image might not appear on the printout because it might be bigger than the page. So before you actually print, think about what you want to do. You want either print as shown or print to fit the page. In any event, um, we're gonna scroll down and um, I'm gonna show you some more images. This is the anti-lock brake system for the Armada. And if you notice this little triangle in this gray area, that will hide all of these uh, 
these pop-ups, these, these pages over here, under here. So we can remove it and we can see the whole page. And this gives you a little uh, legend of what each number is in the diagram over here. Number one is the front wheel sensor. Number two is the ABS actuator and ECU. Number three with the combination meter and so on, all the way up to 12. Again, you can make it smaller so you can see it all in one shot. And you can use the vertical scroll bar over here to scroll up and down. And I just want to show you going back over here under breaks. Let's look under general procedures. This talks about the ABS control module R&R. I don't know what R&R stands for, but uh, they give you some caution notices over here. And this is talking about or description of how to remove this ABS control module, which could really be interesting and helpful for a uh, a uh, DIYer, do it yourselfer. On the right, we have print options. You can pr print the text only, or you have the option to print the text and the images. I just got rid of the uh, this diagram over here, and it looks like it's nine steps. And um, we're going to go back. I just want to show you some more. Uh, let's look at disc brakes. And they talk about uh, the brake pad service for the front. And we're going to scroll down. We're going to go to the rear wheels. Kind of interesting, certainly helpful for the DIYer. Um, what I do want to show you is also um, down here the parts and labor section. I think that's pretty useful. So these would be uh, parts and labor for the Nissan Altima 2009. And I wanted to show you under brakes and then uh, the anti-lock brakes. all and the subject should be over here and this is going to be the abs abs actuator where is that let's just try the control model module so this line over here that i'm highlighting pretty much is a flow chart or it tells you how you got to where you are. We looked under brakes, under, under all, then we narrowed it down to anti-lock brakes, and then the control model module. And of course, it didn't really help us much because it didn't really give us the part number, the call out, or the pricing. However, let's go under here under brakes again. I did this earlier today and breaks. I don't want all choose anti lock breaks part. All right, let's look for the uh, rear speed sensor. So the subject heading we have now is brakes, all anti-lock brakes, the anti-lock brakes, the rear speed center, sensor. For the 2007 to nine Altima, it looks like uh, the part should cost roughly $240. This is the part number. But if we wanted labor brakes, Anti-lock brakes. And we were looking at the, uh, the rear speed sensor. So it should roughly tell you that it takes the mechanic um, about a half hour to do one side over here. And for both sides, 
whoops, for both sides, it should take roughly about 48 minutes or so. Um, 0.8 times 60 minutes is 48 minutes. It also gives you the skill code of the mechanic. And we're going to click on that. And a B skill code requires a person with limited skills whenever simpler measuring tools are needed, such as a pressure gauge or a dwell tack. I don't know what that means, but um, I think it's probably re re deals with the skill of the mechanic. That's something that kind of could be interesting um, or helpful. I do want to show, just wanted to show you also now the technical service bulletins. I scrolled uh, down a little. And let's look under um, brakes, power brakes, and traction control. So these are from the National Transportation tech or Technical Bulletins from Nissan. This first one is the brake noise utter judder pedal feel up here. I just highlighted it for you. It's from 2018. And this is actually what uh, the technical service bulletin looks like. You can certainly print it out. You can zoom in, make it bigger. But if you make the font bigger, there's less on the page. You can go to page four or five. This one is actually a 12 page document over here. If you wanted to print, click on the print icon on the top right over here and it will go to my local printer. So you can actually take it out to your car when you're working on it. And uh, let's see what else we can find here. Certainly looks not professional and uh, legit, and it is. So what else can I show you? Um, at the top right, you have the option to select a completely new vehicle up here. I'm going to highlight it, or actually it's right up here at the top right under select new vehicle in the dark blue. So it brings us back to the uh, auto repair, excuse me, auto repair source um, splash page. We're going to click on a 2019 uh, Buick Encore. And of course, I want the 1.4 liter one. And again, it populated on the left the subjects we could talk about the air conditioning and heater, the battery replacement, the body and frame, the brakes component systems. And I just scroll down a bit. There's a maintenance schedule, which should come with your manual, which came with a car, parts and labor, which I showed you, the serpentine belt, no idea what that is, specification, steering suspension, the TSBs I showed you, torque specs. Transmission, let's click on transmission. Let's look for basic engine component locations. So it gives you a nice little, uh, very simple, but nice little description, a side view, I believe, of uh, where the air filter is, the brake fluid reservoir is, things like the oil cap filter. Um, if you're interested in a differential specification, we can do that. I'm clicking on that. And it shows you the capacity for the differential and the lubricant. It tells you this fluid type over here and the temperature that it could be used with, all temps, stuff like that. One other option that you have is if you're looking at a particular make and model in this case, you could type in over here with next to the uh, magnifying glass the word windows or whatever you're interested in. So this is just a search under the Buick Encore. And I just did a simple search since if what I'm looking for doesn't fall in any of these categories, like air conditioning and battery and body and frame and brakes, you could just do a word search. And that's what I did. I'm going to do, I'm going to choose the first option just to show you what it is. It looks like it's a component location, door manual, window regulator section. And the word in yellow is the cert word that we searched for. I'm going to click on that. And it looks like this is a description on dealing with the door manual window regulator bolt. 
Um, we can make it bigger, as I showed you before. We can scroll down to get an idea of what we're looking at. It looks like this is a door. This would be the window up here. And we have a legend down here. This is the rear side door, manual window, regulator, bolt. And this is what the number one and number two is. Number one is over here, right up here. And that's the number two. So what I do want to say is the newer the car, the less likely it is that they'll have a complete comprehensive list of all these subject headings that I'm pointing at over here. The rationale is that uh, the newer the car, the less maintenance and repair it'll need. But by the same token, if you pick a car from let's say 1954 or 55, they might not actually have those repair manuals on uh, order repair source. So you might have to search a little, but it's definitely worth your time and effort to do that. Um, let's look at the brakes for this over here, the parking brake system. And this will talk about how to remove the parking brake cable R&R &R for the Buick Encore, the 1.4 liter from 2019. Um, if you have any questions, definitely keep searching. Uh, it's a really kind of an intuitive user interface. Um, I definitely am a fan of this search icon over here because you could type in brakes and it's searching. And there's a category in specifications, then component locations, other brakes, the labor sec the labor section, how it would take to change or fix the parking brake control or the brake adjusting it, the brakes adjusting them. Further down, there's a part section on brakes. There are procedures. The first one would be, for example, general procedures, brake hydraulic system bleed, and everything you can imagine on brakes is over here. You might have to put some different terms in up here next to the magnifying glass, but um, it'll narrow it down. It'll certainly help you get to what you're looking for. Um, let's see. Just want to see, there's a menu up here at the top right. You can see your search history, which I would like to show you. So our first search, I believe, was the a BMW 328. I think I did that earlier today. But we searched for the Chevy, Chevrolet Equinox, then the Versa, the Altima. That's where I started with you folks. Then we did this 2009 Nissan 350, then the Altima. And these are the last basically 25 vehicles that we searched. Um, I don't think we can do much with it. It doesn't look like they're clickable, but um, it's, it tells you what you searched for. What else is there? Just want to show you the uh, maintenance schedule. Let's look at it for miles, normal service, and we're going to search. Let's say we have uh, 5,000 miles on the car, I believe. So it's 7,500 miles for the Buick Encore 2019. This is actually what you need. You need an underbody inspection, a brake inspection, tire rotation and all that good stuff. And then at 15,000 miles, this is what you would need. All of these options that I'm, or what I'm scrolling at, down. And then at, nope, it's, it's to, tops out at 5, 15,000. So I hope you thought this was interesting. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to email me at fdaleref. F-D-A-L-E-R-E-F -E -E at nasalibrary.org. I'm going to be, um, I'm taping this. I'm going to put it up on YouTube momentarily. You can just do a YouTube search for Farmingdale Library and um, you'll see a whole list of uh, webinars that I've done relating to our online databases. Um, I plan on doing roughly two or three of these a week. So check back for more of them on YouTube. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email or call me. And I hope you have a great evening. And in, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Take care. Have a great night. Bye-bye.